What's going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's video, I want to show you this super, super cool effect that you guys can do on your own videos. So this is going to be a really cool glowing uh, mask effect. This is what we're going to be creating using uh, Machine Gun Kelly's newest, I think it's his newest music video called Emo Girl. Link is in the description of this video. I want to give a special thanks to Pixel Film Studios for sponsoring today's video. Also, don't forget to check them out on YouTube where they provide their own comprehensive Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials covering a variety of topics. You can visit their YouTube playlist, which I will link down below. Please use my coupon code KINGPIXELPRO at checkout so you guys can save a little bit on that as well. All right, so what you wanna do is have your video in the timeline. I've already done that, as you can see here. Go over to the titles and generators and you go down to titles, you will be able to find the Pixel Film Studios Final Cut Pro 10 effects tracker 2.0 and then you have a custom mask and then you also have a shape mask so these are going to be your titles the way that titles work they just work as a title so you can add them above your media without having to apply it directly on the video itself and you can also split the clip and delete the rest and move them around you can you know add multiple of these effects like that or if you prefer using the effects then go into the effects go down and select the same plugin and then you'll have the custom mask as well as the shape mask so I'm gonna go with the custom mask I'm gonna click and drag this onto the video clip here you're gonna have a bunch of settings so with different categories you can click on instructions to read through the instructions on how to use the plugin if you guys get stuck by the way it is m1 compatible here so if you have an m1 chip this is going to work so I'm gonna go over down here uh, under control mode and you're gonna have track mode mask mode and effect mode. Then you go down to the mask controls with all of these settings as well as keyframes for all of them. You also have the guide controls, you have the outline controls, you have enhancement controls, you have color correction so you can actually add a LUT to the mask which is honestly really really cool, one of my favorite features. I'm definitely glad that they added this. You have the blur controls and then here is the main effect that we're going to be doing is the glow control. So I'm going to go up at the top and go down to the track editor and this will open up their new tracker. What I want to do is click and drag this red square. The inner red square is where you actually are going to track and then this outer red square is the search window. So if you go down to search width, you want to make this bigger if there's a lot of movement. In this case, what I want to do is track this here because it actually does a very good job. So I'm going to track it here. Make sure the playhead is at the beginning and then you're going to hit the track forward button. Now you can see it's tracking it in real time and it's doing an excellent job of tracking this kind of cool sculpture in the back. So once it's finished here, you can see all of the frames that it added. Then once you're ready, hit export data and then click confirm to close the window. Then you're gonna go back into your timeline and you don't see anything yet. So we have to change the control mode from track mode down to mask mode. So click on this. And then now you should have the pen tool enabled. So I'm going to go to the very beginning, which is where I want the effect to begin. If you want it to start here, then start your mask there. So I'm gonna just move it to the beginning. I'm gonna go down to track controls and then uh, under mask controls. So I'm gonna add next to mask data where it says keyframe here. You wanna make sure you add a keyframe to be able to pretty much keyframe it to him because you can see that he moves away from the camera. It gets smaller, so we wanna change the size of that. So we're gonna start this off right over here. And I'm just adding fewer points to make the mask easier to move around. We don't need to get too exact, so I'm just gonna click and drag here. Click and drag to make it a curve. And I'm gonna get as close as to his body as possible. So some of the guitar might be out of it, but that's totally fine. Perfect. So once we're there, you're gonna notice if we skim through, it's tracking that position to where we've uh, tracked it to. But if we go through, you're gonna see that it's only staying in that one position, but it's tracking what we've tracked. So what we wanna do is go to the end and then move it back here, or you can skip a bunch of frames, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna hold shift, Press right on the arrow key and this will skip 10 frames. Then you can just click and drag these points and move them to wherever our subject moves. So I'm gonna do that right over here. Then again, shift right on the arrow key. Wherever he really moves out of the frame, just reposition this as close as you can. Okay, so I just finished here and this is what it should look like. So if I skim through, you're gonna see it's slowly tracking him throughout the video. I'm skipping every 10 frames. And it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we're going to feather this. Go down to mask controls and then under feathering, 
just increase this outwards or inwards. I'm gonna feather it inwards so that we can get it as close as we can to him. So once we're there, we're gonna change the control mode down to the effect uh, mode. And now you can see the green and what the green is, it's pretty much the guide because it's enabled and you can just see what's happening. It's just tracking him. So now we wanna turn that off. So just go down to the guide controls, turn the mask guide off. So just check that button and then do the same thing for the effects guide to turn that off. Now, if we go down to the glow controls, there's a bunch of settings here that you can change. Let me go through them really quickly so you can just get an idea of what it is. So here the mask controls pretty much controls the mask itself. So we're gonna skip over that, but you have these settings here just allows you to control, you know, that like the edge, you can invert the mask, which is what we're gonna do. So if you wanna know what we're doing with the mask, just re-enable it here. And then this, whatever is in green is what we're affecting. So we wanna do the opposite though. So we wanna affect everything else except him. Just go over to invert mask and make sure that's selected. So now you can see all of the green area is what we're going to be applying the effect to. And anything that's, you know, that we just mask is not going to be affected. So that's what we want. So now we can just turn off the effects guide. And then if we go down to the outline controls, you can enable an outline if you want, which kind of looks kind of cool, but I'm gonna turn that off for now. And you can also change the color to like yellow or something. And then you can also change like the fade here. I'm gonna turn that off. We do have enhancement control. So if you wanted to just brighten the, you know, like, or maybe even darken the image around him, just go down to brightness and just decrease that. And now the emphasis is more on him, as you can see here. Or you can increase the brightness, you know, but I'm gonna reset that. And you can also change the blend mode here to get a different look. If we go down to color correction is the highlights. So you can go over here, click on highlights, and you can actually increase or decrease the luma on this to adjust the uh, highlights in this case. You can change the color of like the floor and make it more green or blue, which is pretty cool. You can change the midtones here. As you can see, it changes the overall color to color corrected if you want. And then you can go down to LUT. So these are all of my LUTs that I created for my store. You can import any LUTs that you have or you want to use. Just uh, add one. So this is the one that I have here, the Atlanta Sky LUT. Now, if you're gonna be doing the LUT, I suggest being as accurate as possible with your mask. I'm gonna not have that enabled. What I wanna do is go to the glow controls, but here you have blur controls. You can adjust the uh, blurriness. So you can actually blur the edges, whatever you have affected here and increase the luma or decrease it. I wanna go down to glow controls, which is what we want. So now if we go to glow percentage, if we increase this, now you can start to see the effects come alive which is definitely, definitely awesome, especially for this kind of punk rock genre of music. Here you have highlights. You can increase the uh, brightness of the highlights. Intensity is how intense the effect is. And soften those edges, as you can see. And you can increase the glow amount, which is what I'm gonna do. Maybe increase the glow. This is really cool. You have the chromatic aberration. What this does, it creates that RGB effect. So it kind of gives you red, green, and blue. I definitely love this effect. What I'm gonna do though is keyframe this so that it kind of increases as we play out the video. So if we add a keyframe next to that, and you go maybe here, and we go to chromatic aberration, we increase it all the way. You're gonna see the beginning doesn't have it, but once we play it through, it kind of slowly adds it, and then maybe you can add another keyframe, and then go a couple of frames, and then turn it off completely. So you'll have this kind of look here which looks pretty cool. You can then change the streak angle. I think I'm gonna leave it how it is because it's going you know, left and right with the checkerboard pattern in the back. You can increase the tint glow. So if you wanna change the color of that, you can increase it and then go down to tint color and then change this to a different color of your choosing. So if you wanted green or blue or something like that, you can definitely do that. I think for this clip, I'm just going to maybe go a little bit more on the blue side. So now if we go back here and we have a before and after, so let me play it through. So this is a before. And then this is with the plugin applied, which looks so, so awesome. And this works better on really bright areas in your video. So if you have highlights, it will affect those highlights here. Uh, as you can see on the checkerboard. Now, this is with the uh, custom mask, you know, pretty much the all of these settings are almost exactly the same if you were to apply it with the shape mask. So if I click on and drag this onto that clip there, you can do the same exact thing. So we can see we have mask controls. The only difference here is the mask shape. So if I just go to track editor and I do this very quickly and show you how this would work. So I'm just gonna track 
the sculpture here. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit stop, hit export data. And then what you wanna do now is shift this to the effect mode. So now you don't get the mask effect or the mask mode because now we're working with the shape. You'll notice if we shift it off of the mask area, that's just showing you how much of the offset it is. So maybe we wanna just adjust this size and then maybe I want to change the roundness. So just go down to mask controls change the mass shape from rectangle to ellipse, and this will just make it round. Then just go to feather, increase the feather inwards or outwards. I'm gonna increase it like, or not increase, I'm gonna decrease the feather. Then you can just turn off the guide here and then just go down to the glow. And then now you can just increase it because we wanna affect the outside of him and not him. I mean, you can create this effect too if you want, but I want to affect the outside. So I'm gonna shift mask, so invert the mask. There you go. So now if I push play, you have the same exact effect, but done much, much quicker. So it depends what type of, like what the subject is, right? So if it's a relatively simple shape, you can use a shape mask, but if you wanna be more precise, definitely use the pen tool. The plugin in the effects work the same way as the titles. So just FYI. If you guys like this video, please consider leaving a like. And I'll catch you on my next video.